Hey everyone, John Sherrod here. Welcome back to your Apple Update, where I'm giving you all the Apple news that you need to know twice a week. Uh, and uh, what we want to talk about tonight is some new rumors about the future of iTunes, or lack thereof. Um, iTunes is uh, one of those products that people have had a love-hate relationship for a long time. Windows users in particular have, have never really seemed to love the, the product and have had, you know, kind of a grudging, well, I have to use it to sync my iPod kind of relationship with it or my iPhone. Um, but, you know, for years now, especially as we've seen on iOS, um, Apple has, you know, separate apps there for music, uh, podcast, um, uh, and then the, they have the Apple TV app now for TV shows and movies. Previously, they had a videos app. So they've had these things separated into several apps, and people have been wondering for a long time, when's this going to happen to iTunes on the Mac? Because iTunes has just become bloated over the years as it's tried to do all those things in one app where, you know, when iTunes started... Uh, many years ago now, um, it was just an app for, for playing back music and other audio kind of files like that. But it's since grown on to take on all these tasks. It even included, um, you know, syncing your iPhone and managing your, your home screen apps and things like that. So it looks like now, finally, in version 10.15 of macOS, which will be the successor to Mojave that we expect to, to be announced at the Worldwide Developers Conference in June and then be available to consumers in the fall, it looks like we're finally going to see the breakup of iTunes on the Mac. So this is something people have been looking forward to for a long time, and I think we're going to have it. We first saw some news about this um, a few days ago from developer Steve Troutman-Smith on Twitter, where he claimed to have some inside information he couldn't reveal, but that gave him confidence that this is what we were going to see in the next version of Mac OS. And today, there is an article uh, on 9to5Mac uh, that confirms it, including uh, showing uh, icons for what the music and podcast app uh, will look like in the next version of Mac OS. We also, I guess kind of stepping back for a second too, when Apple hosted its event uh, the other week where it announced all of its services uh, products coming out later this year, including the new TV service, they also talked about a redesigned TV app for the Apple TV where you'll be able to subscribe to Apple's new uh, Apple TV Plus streaming service, but also subscribe to you know streaming services through Apple TV channels, confusing the use of the Apple TV name, but they mentioned there that the TV app will be coming to the Mac. And so that, that really started uh, opening the floodgates to questions about, well, if you're bringing the TV app to the Mac, does that mean that we're going to finally get this breakup of iTunes? And it looks to be the case. And how Apple will do this, most likely, is they will use their new um, UI kit for Mac OS. So developers writing apps for, for the Macintosh have used a, a, a development tool called AppKit, for a long time, whereas on iOS you have a tool called UIKit. And last year at WWDC, Apple took the first steps toward bringing UIKit to the Mac uh, when they released uh, some, some, some apps in Mojave that were built using this new UIKit service, and they promised that this year it'll be open to developers and they'll have more detail surrounding it. But we got, let's see what we got. We got the Home app, the Apple News app, um, the Stocks app, and the Voice Memos app all came to the Mac using this new framework. And it's gotten better over time, um, but you know, some of the concern is, do, do, are these apps going to feel like native Mac apps? And hopefully we're going to see a more mature, robust version of this UI kit for the Mac, which will allow developers, including Apple's internal development teams, to create rich experiences for the Mac that um, don't feel like foreign invaders on the Mac platform. We don't want things to feel like an iOS app on the Mac. It, it needs to feel like a native Mac app. But that's probably the framework they're going to use to bring these new uh, apps, podcast, um, Apple Music, and uh, Apple TV to the Mac instead of just having iTunes. Now, the article mentions that iTunes is still going to stick around because people are still going to need a way to sync their you know legacy hardware devices. Like if you've got an old iPod that you're still using, and many of you do, um, then you're still going to need some way to sync it. And it sounds like if this report from 9 and 5 Mac is to be believed that iTunes will still stick around in some form, maybe it'll keep its same version number and only occasionally getting patches for bug fixes and security updates and things like that, um, but will uh, continue to exist on the Mac in some form or fashion. And I would wonder how they would do that. Will iTunes uh, still live in the applications folder or will they move it to utilities? Um, it'll kind of be a situation like when um, uh, QuickTime was revamped for Mac OS 10 many years ago, and they still kept the old version of QuickTime 7 around. Um, I wonder if they'll do something similar to that here. The other big question is, what happens on Windows? Because 
Um, just because of the nature of how many Windows PCs are in the world, there are vastly more users of iTunes on Windows you know, computers than there are on Macs, as crazy as that might seem. Um, and so, uh, you know, the real question there, which the article doesn't address, is what happens to iTunes on Windows? And the, my potential bad news for you Windows users out there who might be watching it is my concern is that probably Apple will continue to keep iTunes around, um, probably unchanged, for some time to come. I don't know that, that, you know, there's a real question, will we get the Apple TV app at some point for Windows? And if so, if, if we get that, then I can certainly see them bringing Apple Podcasts and Apple Music over as separate apps. But my fear, my gut tells me that they're just going to keep iTunes around as it's always been, which is uh, kind of hilariously unfortunate because it's you guys on Windows who have been the, the most uh, vocal complainers about iTunes. And it's true on the Mac as well. It, it probably, I think probably most of us on the Mac side even stopped loving it after, after version 8 or 9, somewhere in there is when it kind of started becoming you know, not, you know, an app that even us on the Mac didn't enjoy as much, but uh, you Windows users have had complaints for a while. So my fear is, unfortunately, you're still going to be stuck with iTunes for some time to come. But hey, that's just more reason for you guys to consider coming over to the Mac side of things. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think I think this year's Worldwide Developers Conference is going to be one of the biggest in years, and I should probably do a video elaborating on that more in the future. But I think we're going to have a lot to look forward to, and uh, I think this is going to be the first of many big things to come. Uh, and so I think we can look forward to the end of iTunes and a future that includes separate apps for these separate things, which I think is what most of us would prefer to see long term. That's it for this episode of Your Apple Update. I'm your host, John Sherrod. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.